We're here today with Corrado de Guilmi and Laura D'Arcavaglio. Um, uh, Corrado is a lecturer uh, in economics at the University of Technology in Sydney, and uh, Laura is an assistant professor at the Sao Paulo School of Economics in, in Brazil. Um, and they're here because there are grantees for a very, uh, really very ambitious grant, which is titled Macroeconomic Instability and Microeconomic Financial Fragility, a Stock Flow Consistent Approach with Heterogeneous Agents. Okay, so we got to find out what all that means. Um, welcome, Corrado. Welcome, Laura. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now, Corrado, I want to start with, with you, um, because this seems to me this project grows out in some way of your PhD dissertation um, on this thing called the mean field interaction. Um, which, if I understand it right, is an attempt to do sort of uh, microeconomics and macroeconomics using distributions of agents um, in order to, in order to uh, aggregate up. The idea of the, the aggregation uh, through the mean field interaction is basically to understand that, economic, that an economic system is composed by a large number of agents. So you cannot predict or you cannot uh, analyze just uh, one of them, like in the Standard. Representative agent, yeah. yes. Um, but also you cannot like follow all the agents. So the idea of this method is to group agents and to understand that the dynamics is fundamentally stochastic. So something that physicists understood ages ago. So what we get at the end are distributions, but also uh, we get also deterministic component. In this, uh, mm -hmm. in this dynamics. Now, I'm going to ask you in a bit about the physics here because this is quite, there's a lot of math here uh, and, uh, and I want to understand this. But the underlying idea, as far as I get it, is that you think that this new approach is going to allow us to provide some analytical sort of framework underneath the Minsky financial instability hypothesis that the, it's the Minsky and kind of conception of the world that you're after in this project. Is that, is that right? Yes, that's correct. I mean, the idea that you can group agents according to their characteristics sounds very much like the Minskian idea of this grouping agents according hedge, to their class. Speculative, and Ponzi. Ponzi. Uh -huh. yeah. um, so it really suits very well the idea of Minsky, but the method, the, the, my idea is a method, so you can apply the method to any field in macro or micro. Mm -hmm. And now, so that's a lot of math and a very sophisticated method. Um, but you said uh, that what you're embedding that in now is a stock flow consistent uh, kind of yes. model. And that's where Laura comes in? Yes. I think, okay, so Laura, let me turn to you. So sure. what is this thing, this stock flow consistent that you're talking about? Well, um, basically the idea is to divide the economy in groups of agents and um, sectors in general, so households, the financial sector, or central bank, I mean, you can have as many sectors as you want, and track down flows uh, between those sectors and how these flows accumulate into their balance sheets, right? So assets and liabilities of the sectors and how that then affects future flows and so on. The methodology gained a lot of attention after the crisis uh, because it was able to capture this accumulation of debt uh, mm -hmm. in the U.S. private sector very well and how it connected to money creation and the financial system and so on. Um, but then the, the reason we came together was basically, uh, I mean, I had the feeling and, and so did Corrado that this stock flow consistent approach lacked a little bit of the micro uh, interaction and this Minskian um, idea of financial systems. Mm -hmm. uh, so putting the two together and merging these so two. So that's the idea. idea. You're taking really two kinds of new economic thinking, okay, Yeah. Uh, and, and joining them together to create something new that we don't know what it is yet. Um, yeah. But uh, what we know is it's not going to be just simulation, which all pretty much agent-based models are all simulation yeah. um, because of your analytical uh, departure. Um, and it's not going to be just balance sheets, okay, because no. we've got this micro. Yeah. So we're going to see what, what comes out of it. It's all very exciting. Um, but tell me, so how did you ever get together and decide to do this? How did you meet each other? We met at the New School for Social Research in uh -huh. New York, uh, I think in 2011. Yes. Uh, basically, Corrado went there to give a talk and about his dissertation. I guess he, he presented one of his papers. And I was sitting down as a PhD student in the audience, asked him a couple of questions. 
And then we got introduced by a professor there, and I said uh, what I was doing in my, in my research. And Corrado had already the intention to, to go that, that way with uh, his research. So after that, we started writing a paper uh, together, and then the INET uh, grant idea came, came out. So now I'm interested in finding out where this project um, comes from a little bit in your, your life, because it, it, it's a remarkable kind of confluence of events here too. But so Corrado, I was looking at your CV here, and I see that really it looks like you just studied economics. You did a BA in economics and a master's in economics and a PhD. And yet when I look at the list of your papers, I see all these things about scaling laws and maximum entropy and so forth. So here's somebody who's been uh, bitten by the econophysical bug or something <laughs> like this. Tell me, how did that come? Was that in your classes or was that a private uh, interest? Or? No, actually, when I started working in the Department of Economics uh, at the University of Ancona in Italy, and I met Mauro Gallegati, mm -hmm. who at the time was uh, in contact with a lot of physicists. Another of our yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And, um, yeah, so introducing me. At the beginning, it was a very fasc fascinating uh, idea, the one of mixing statistical physics, uh, uh, physics in general, with economics. Mm -hmm. uh, I think econophysics didn't quite live up to its premises because um, it ended up basically studying uh, stock um, uh, equity prices, uh, applying distribution on that, and the real innovation that could be the, the one I'm trying to do to apply the idea of statistical mechanics to micro fund, so to keep into account the heterogeneity of agents and mm -hmm. the fact that they interact. And, uh, and you, Laura, so I actually <coughs> don't know, where did, did you do a uh, bachelor's degree in economics? Yes, I did a uh, bachelor's in and a master's at uh -huh. the Federal University of Rio okay. in Brazil, uh, which is a big public university but with a very plural uh, body, uh, faculty body, and I guess heterodox uh, in many ways, uh, or at least, you know, I was, had access to a lot of new economic thinking as an undergrad and as a master's student. And then the PhD at the new school. Well, uh, you mentioned in your, in your grant application that it was Lance Taylor who sort of turned you on to this uh, social accounting kind of way of thinking of math. Yeah, is that right? Yeah. That's right. So I was a Lance Taylor student uh, in my first macro, year. Structuralist macro, which is a natural connection for somebody coming from Brazil. Yeah, yes. I mean, I had already uh, had uh, access to Lance Taylor's work yeah. as an undergrad and as a master's student in Brazil. And I went to the new school already with the idea of working with uh, Lance. And I was his student in my first year at his advanced macroeconomics class and then became a, a teaching assistant for that class. I did that for three years in a row and I was also his research assistant mm -hmm. at the Schwartz And so Center. that then fed into the PhD, which fed into uh, exactly, Colorado yeah. and the whole life in unfolding. Yeah, and uh, I mean, I, I always yeah. liked his way of um, framing uh, macroeconomic theory within um, accounting uh, relations and how you close those accounting mm -hmm. relations. So I guess the stock flow consistent approach is just uh, uh, one way of, of uh, mm -hmm. thinking about this. Well, I, I'm just really looking forward to seeing the results of this, these two channels of new economic thinking sort of coming together and uh, it's, uh, it's really very exciting and ambitious. And we're really glad to have you as part of our stable of uh, INET economists. Um, welcome. It's good to talk to you today. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.